Inflation is at its highest rate in 30 years. It's kind of scary. What do we do about it? That's what we're going to talk about on today's episode of Friends Talk Financial Planning. Hi, I'm John Shear, and I run a fee-only financial planning practice in Middleton, Wisconsin. I'm Bridget Sullivan Mamel, and I've got a fee-only financial planning practice in Chicago, Illinois. Oh, before we start talking about inflation, uh, John, I want to remind people to subscribe. It helps us with YouTube and helps more people find out about us. So uh, please subscribe. That's so, great. John, we, uh, I'm getting people asking me about inflation and people don't like inflation, I think. So some people don't like inflation and uh, it really triggers anxiety and fear of people. And so uh, they want to know, what, what are we doing right. about this? Yeah. You what are we doing what you see. <laughs> yeah. And um, so what are we doing about this? And so I'm wondering what you tell, what, how you talk your clients through this. Yeah, that's it's it's a it's a big question. I'm really glad to be talking about this today. And it's that what do you do thing? Um, it, it seems to me that inflation it's got that sort of scary connotation, right? I've got this this fear. It, it invokes fear. It invokes an emotion, and then it sort of triggers. I, I think this, you know, when there's fear, it's sort of flight or fl- fight or flight, right? It, I have to do something, and so I talk with people a lot about uh, about looking at what's the real question, like what's really driving this fear. I don't know if, if that's what you talk about with your clients. I try to work through the solution. So I'm really happy that you're trying to get to the bottom of what the fear is, because I think that is a really insightful approach. So it seems to me like the fear can be about, I don't want to run out of money. That's one fear. Uh, That's like kind of the bottom, the ultimate fear. But in the meantime, people are worried about, well, what if something happens to my income from my job? and prices keep going up and then it doesn't work out and i run out of money um yeah that seems like something that smart people are thinking about right like 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 that that's that's the you're getting to the real questions right And, Mm -hmm. and as i think about it who's actually afraid of inflation in and of itself well, no, it's not inflation, right? That raises rates on, you know, on uh, savings accounts and things. And it's, you know, salaries go up. So it's not inflation is not it. It's those things that you were just talking about as, oh, no, I'm, I'm afraid of what if I can't afford my lifestyle in the future, right? What if I run out of money? What if, you know, some of these other things, maybe when I was growing up, uh, you know, my, my dad lost his job and it was in a, in a time back in the 70s when we had inflation and that triggers those sort of thought processes processes. And so it's not necessarily inflation by it, you know, know, like, who's actually afraid of inflation, it's those things that inflation can do. And I think it's really useful to to ask yourself or to dig in. And that's some of the work we do with our clients is trying to find out what's the real question, what are we really concerned about? What's what's actually bothering you? Because it's usually not inflation. It's about some of those things that inflation maybe does or can lead to or has his, you have history with it. And those are the things that can be really use, useful to find out what's actually bothering you um, so that you can do something about it then, right? right? Right, right. And sometimes and people want to do something about that with their financial planning. And it's not, there are things that you can do. But uh, I have found that sometimes they're not satisfactory for people because they don't feel like they're doing enough. They want to be able to fight or flight that is somehow like they don't want to just see, okay, your overall portfolio is designed for these ups and downs of the stock market of inflation of the overall economic events. And your, your, your net worth is designed to be able to withstand whatever ups and downs come our way. Uh, and they, they want to take more action. Yeah, it's, it's that doing thing. And um, I'll tell you, one of the things I think it's really important as we talked, you know, sort of face the emotional side, right? It's, it's, it's not, it's not necessarily logical, right? It's, it's some of these, some of these emotions come up and to go, okay, what are those emotions I'm feeling? And then I find, I think it's useful to take a look and try to take a step back if you can and look at some of the facts, 
because I know it's for me, I think for a lot of people, you, you have this, oh, here's inflation and here's what it can do. And then you start to think about what maybe some experiences you've had or somebody you've heard about. And then you it start this sort of negative spiral and to say, well, listen, let's look at some of the facts on things. And one of the facts I talk about with people these days is, you know, it, inflation is higher than it has been in a long time, but we're just barely above the, the long-term average for inflation, right? You know, we, we've had... 20 or so years where inflation has been under the average. So at some point you go, listen, it's going to be higher. Right? And, and to think about it in long-term context, you go, oh, you know, inflation now is not as bad as it was in the 70s sort of thing, right? Okay, wait a minute, have some context. And another thing I, th I talk with people about is just what inflation, you know, over the last year, what the price of gas has gone up a dollar or something, a gallon, like, holy moly, it's gone up so much. But when you look back 10 and 15 years, I mean, back in 2008, 2009, the price of gas was on average was nearly four dollars a gallon at at one point uh, before the uh, before the credit crisis right so what you got 10 12 14 years and the price of gas is actually less than it was 14 years ago or 12 years ago you think wait a minute oh that's right i kind of forgot about that i was thinking about last year in the middle of the pandemic right and they go oh it kind of kind of makes me feel a little bit more well, that helps me to more objectively look at what's going on and less emotionally look at what's going on and so i think that that can be really helpful as uh, to, to look at number one is to ex to recognize hey this is an emotional thing right i mean it is scary of course, right? I mean, you look at prices jumping, you think, ah, what do you do? And and then also to look at some of the facts, and maybe the facts are, yeah, holy cow, gas is worth, you know, cost twice what it has, you know, ever cost. Or it could be one of those things where it's like, oh, geez, I guess in some fashions, it's not quite as bad as I might have felt like it is, right? Reconciling the facts with the feelings, that can be just really helpful to, to balance out people's thinking on things. So those are those are two things that I think are really useful as you think about these uh, inflation in particular here. Right. And I think it's important for people to uh, realize that their overall plan is what protects them against inflation. And the, your plan, people hire, uh, have specifically told me that they're hiring me to help them with their fears, like help them get out of reptile brain and into more long-term uh, integrated thinking and out of the fight or flight. Uh, with that though, we do have some specific suggestions to make sure that your overall financial plan includes these things so that uh, to best protect you because there are some specific things that we suggest that do help protect you about them from inflation. The first is invest in stocks and the second is have a fixed mortgage and the third is our most popular item lately is uh, invested in iBots. So John, tell me more if you have any more to say on those. Yeah, th those, you know, we talked about this in a recent episode, I think it was over the summer about uh, stocks, you know, stock prices can, businesses can react to inflation quickly. So buying stocks helps to, you know, stock mutual funds, having a fixed mortgage, right? Rates, we've still got clients that are, you know, refinancing mortgages, 3%, something like that. If inflation goes up, suddenly your mortgage is, is paid off in cheaper and cheaper dollars over time. And then those I bonds, right? Those adjust with inflation right now, they're paying 7% or something like that. I mean, it's a good deal. So some of those basics haven't changed. And, uh, uh so you know, circling back, I guess that's probably a good place just to sort of wrap things up is if you feel yourself worrying about inflation, you read these articles, number one, ask yourself, what are you really afraid of? What's really bugging? You? It's not the inflate. What, what's underneath that? That can be really helpful to take control of this. And number two, look at some of the facts. Like what are the facts that are, that are driving? Is it, does the reality that you can find reflect your fears or is there maybe a disconnect that's helpful to look at? And then you know, as you just said, Bridget, your portfolio and your investments always be diversified in things, have some I bonds, have a fixed mortgage, buy stocks and prepare yourself no matter when there's good times and bad times out there. So with that, let's uh, wrap it up. I'm Bridget Sullivan Mermel, and I have a fee only financial planning practice in Chicago, Illinois. And I'm with John Shearer, who's in uh, Middleton, Wisconsin. We're both members of ACP or the Alliance of Comprehensive Planners. If you like how we talk about this stuff, there's advisors nationwide that uh, share our values and uh, think about things much the same way.
That's right. You can find uh, a, an ACP, ACP planner near you at acplanners.org. And remember to hit that subscribe button. So until next time, Bridget, thanks.